be paid on a month by month basis. And uh, that is 50 50. And uh, there's been different methods uh, discussed about uh, how that should be computed, but uh, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, the city has more 911 calls than the rest of the county combined. So, uh, in any event, uh, that's about the best that I can explain to you. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Also, uh, myself, uh, <coughs> Terry, Alley, and um, Tom Gustin are part of the advisory board that's been discussing this uh, interlocal agreement. So this is something that city council's had some input on with uh, with those members of the city council. I know speaking to Terry Alley and Tom Gustin, they've expressed to me their desire to, and their, their feelings that we have to support the central dispatch. Um, they kind of, you know, if you don't support it, <laughs> It's a bad position to be in without central well, dispatch. Well, it, it, it's mandated by the state in one form or another, and it's, it doesn't make, to me, a lot of economic sense to be separate mm -hmm. uh, because I, I believe it would cost more in the long run and not be as efficient. Right. And we do have a member of the county council here tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, let's call you out, Linda. <laughs> but I assume that's why you're here about this. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to it no I'm just here to okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, but like I said we, we've had attended multiple meetings uh, had meetings with uh, Chief Bessner Chief uh, Meeks about um, about a, about every as aspect of this that I can imagine so um, I know the county's getting towards the end of the year and they're wondering where their payment is for some of this equipment and stuff so as far as I know, the police and the fire department are on board with this. Is there any questions from the board? I know it's kind of last minute brought up. Seems straightforward to me. Any other question, comment from the public? Well, I'll accept a motion to accept the uh, interlocal agreement as presented tonight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Next, we move into old business. We have no old business here. Uh, let's go into new business. First, we have Heidi Wright, uh, request in honor of domestic violence awareness. You want to kind of give us a, yeah. an overview of that? Um, I'm an advocate for domestic violence and sexual assault victims. And the reason I'm here today is uh, October is Awareness Month, and I serve on the coalition here locally against domestic violence, and we want to do a campaign called Shed the Light on Domestic Violence. I have researched it a little bit, and I think our best option is, if you will allow us, is to purchase gel that will go over the security lights that are on the ground. I won't put anything on any other lights that will cast a purple light onto City Hall. I've also discussed it a little bit with Josh Francis to do it on the courthouse, and he's in agreement as well. I'm not going to change the light bulbs. I think getting the gels is a fairly straightforward and easy process, and I'll be the one putting them on, and I'll be the one taking it off at the end of the month. And then um, I did also before with the caveat that we could come on uh, the night of the City Council meeting and have the proclamation read that uh, right at that time of night it will be perfect to actually see the light on these buildings mm -hmm. um, for awareness within our community. <coughs> okay. So I will be purchasing the, the gels. And I'll take care of it all. Okay. So you just ask for permission so you can put these gels on the Certainly. on the lights, and these are ground level lights. You said security. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I get Chief Meeks, you'd probably be the one person I'd want to see as far as if you have any concerns or anything. No, not at all. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Any other concerns? Any concerns from the board? No, I think, I think great. great. Okay. Well, uh, look for a motion to accept the uh, the request by the, the Heidi Wright to be able to put the gels on the lights at City Hall. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. 
Next, we have uh, Group Five Fires Local 383 road closure request. Thank you, guys. Uh, got a little bit of material here to pass out for you. So you have an idea of where our proposed route is and then um, the uh, three addresses that possibly be affecting. Here is the first copy is our route um, through the whole park. And then the second one is the uh, affected area of the part of the city streets. It is Park Drive. Um, and we are naming, we are requesting from Broadway to the park entrance, which is our German street. <coughs> um, we're asking that we can close it off for the safety of our 5K. Um, I guess I should go into that first. Fruit uh, Fire Fire Local 33 has a uh, Christmas for Kids program that we put on every year. Um, we take it off kids and purchase um, basic necessities that they might be um, not getting for the Christmas spirit. Um, and this year we're trying to come up with a separate um, way of generating some income for that program to help and make it a little better than what we're doing. So we went to the uh, Parks Board and requested permission and got permission to have a 5K on Uncle Park, uh, starting up at the uh, golf course, going to now Park Drive, um, and then you start seeing there the dotted line is the proposed route it's going around the school, um, down the sidewalk, up that uh, brick walk path behind, coming out, and then uh, proceeding back into the park, and then we finish at the uh, golf course again. Um, the Park Drive from Broadway to the uh, park entrance has three, uh, or three personal driveways off of it. Um, we shouldn't need the whole road, so if they need to leave in the meantime, they should be able to get out. We just would have the uh, gates manned. Um, I asked uh, Chris Marks this morning about um, trying to get some volunteers from him. If we can't get any volunteers, then we'll definitely have volunteers at the gates, um, just so that uh, public safety can get in and out without being an inconvenience. Um, we're looking at about 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock that the road would be closed. I hope everybody can get through a mile and a quarter and an hour, but it should be good. What date is that? October the 15th. You would mentioned in the park board meeting that you guys in the past had blocked off half the road. Is that correct? We have never um, had a 5 k so this is our first adventure with it. Okay, there, there's uh, something that somebody had brought up that they had closed yeah. that part of that off at one what point it is, in time. Is when we do the July 4th run, we start at the fire station. <coughs> okay. So we use about half the road, and that's that's been good for it. And they, they get as many as 80 to 100 runners, so blocking off half would be sufficient. Okay. And so you said Park Drive is the... Is that the only road? Yeah, yeah. Park Drive would be the only It'd road. It would be like right here, Broadway, just from here to there. Gotcha. So it's just these houses here. And there's like two right here that would actually, it'd have to allow them to pass. Gotcha. And um, as far as up here, these two addresses, one Park Drive and up here with the other one is, um, we wouldn't even be on the road in front of their house. It's right. just this address down here closer to German. Okay. We would definitely accommodate them as much as we can. Okay. And at that point, we're only going to be on one side of the road. Like you said, it's an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's an hour. Right, and you're going to have people, you're going to have people manning the the barricades and Absolutely. letting people in and out. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And you say you need it for, what time of day is this? For? 9 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, October 15th. <coughs> Is there uh, any questions from the board? No. Is there any uh, comments or questions? Well, I would talk to Nathan about it and recommended that he come and, and mm -hmm. explain that he's going to have the barricades uh, manned, just like we would ask for any event. I mean, right. Anyone that's blocking the road, we ask that they man the barricades so that if we get an emergency run, we don't have to get off the truck. <coughs> so he, 
talked to Chris Mark, so I have no concerns at this point. Okay. Uh, Chief Meeks? Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the map because I got a little confused on where exactly where sure. I was going. Is State, Road, is State Road 19 going to be blocked off at all? No. no. Okay. Good. That would have been the only thing. Was it was just in the park from uh, South Bruce School down into the park. Perfect. Here's the route through. And then uh, the dotted line is proposed running route. Uh, barricades are there at the top at German and then at the bottom down there across the way. Okay. And then those are the effective drive lanes. Awesome. <laughs> Is there any question or concern from the public? <coughs> All right. Well, uh, looking for a motion to accept the road closure request by Proof Fire, Firefighters Local 383. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next we have Sarah Correll. How you doing, Sarah? Good. Um, we, my husband Kurt and I, purchase, are purchasing a home on East Third Street, and he, we have two handicap plates, and then a daughter that visits on a regular basis that has a handicap placard. And in our neighborhood, two houses to the west, there is, I believe, a group home situation, and then across the street, <coughs> either a halfway house or group home situation across the street and to the west a little and it is difficult for us to find a parking place in front of our home because the cars for either one of those residences and the one to the house one house to the west of us have multiple vehicles that park along our street and we are finding that we are having to park three ish houses down from our own home. My husband has COPD. We have our oldest daughter who will be living with us has a congenital heart defect. Um, she did one year pre-op for our post-op from an open heart surgery. And our daughter that visits has a skin disorder that is difficult for her to be out if it's cold or rainy. And so we were looking to see if we could possibly get a handicap sign to put in front of a street sign to put in front of our home, either one or two. Or my husband saw a couple of signs on West 3rd that said that the parking was for residents and guests only. If we could get something like that so if we, when we need to park in front of our house, we're able to do so. And that is our primary parking area. We don't have a driveway or anything in the back of the house. So we didn't know if that was something that was allowable. So we would be able to park in front of our own home. So my husband doesn't have to be, right. you know, out in um, the bad weather, and my daughters don't have to either for long periods of time. Yeah, and I would say that um, the law is that we can't restrict public parking <coughs> for individual use. I guess the way to think about it, and it doesn't really—it's not much help to you. But the way to think about it is. If you if something were happening, you decide to move in a year, and then we have handicapped parking in a space that doesn't make sense for that neighborhood. Um, it's it is a public road, and legally, and the state has spoken on this. I know, Pat, uh, you've spoken about this at a city council meeting recently, that we are unable to put uh, handicapped spaces in front of uh, people's homes. Um, that that kind of designates that spot for that homeowner and their public streets, and we can't. We can't go there um, by state law. I don't know about the signs on, you say West 3rd? It's on Holman. West it's third. next to third. Ivy Tech. Okay. They put them up on Ivy Tech, went in there so the people that live there have parking. I don't know about what the, the well, those signs. It doesn't limit the parking yet. It just says. Uh, it says resident it and visitor parking only? Yeah, it's just so the school doesn't park <coughs> over there because the people on 3rd, down at that end of 3rd, do not have parking in front of their home. They only have Holman Street. So those residents, that's their only spots to park, and so the school doesn't fill them up. It just says resident parking only. Right. But even that, I don't know that we can actually enforce that by state law. Okay. Um, Pat, you know better than I do. Well, I made a presentation. I suggest that what you do is <coughs> get a hold of the state representative, okay, and, uh, and have them uh, 
do something in the uh, General Assembly that enables a town or city to do that as far as handicapped people go and restrict it then to handicapped with special needs. Uh, you can designate certain places for handicapped parking okay, uh, that go along with it. Those are usually in business districts okay, and that kind of thing and that's up to or works. And I don't know that you can restrict it in a neighborhood. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, unless you can show us that, that there's that ability, but I just encourage you to say, okay, if you're going to be able to do this in the business portion of the community, or if it was on private property, for instance, in malls and places like that, they always have places marked off for uh, it, it's it's amazing because the federal government tells you you got to uh, make accommodations for people, all right, but the, uh, uh, many of the state laws don't do that, okay, but when you're talking about what I think you're talking about is, is a public street, mm -hmm. well, uh, the courts have determined that to be uh, open to the public. Right. So you, you can't restrict uh, that. However, if you got into a parking situation, let's say uh, where there's downtown or, or <coughs> in a mall or something like that, then it should be made handicapped assist. Okay, thank you. And uh, Ms. Carroll, I apologize we can't do more. It is really at the state level because I know you're not the first person that we has had concerns like that. Well, um, we. We figured it wouldn't be hurtful to ask because right. we're coming from Wabash and I know that there are places in Wabash that have handicapped signage in front of residential areas, gotcha. which is why we thought, well, we would ask before right. we got into a turf war right. with the next door neighbors trying to be able to park near our homes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All, right, All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Debbie Bowser, we have uh, road closure. I don't see Debbie here. Is there somebody else? Uh, I guess I could take a look to see what the group is and what the request is for. History days. History day, gotcha. Uh, request for road closure on 5th between Courthouse and Broadway for Saturday, October 1st. Um, I know being part of the uh, bicentennial, well at least attending their meetings, uh, talked quite a bit about the history day we're going to have on Saturday, October 1st, uh, at the courthouse. Um, not uh, that the museum is going to participate in this, and I think the museum and Berkshire Court are the only two places that would be affected by us outside the courthouse. We had just approved either last meeting or the meeting before road closure for a different event on October 1st. The yeah, um, because there's actually three or four events going on that day. There's um Cole Porter run. <coughs> yeah, the Cole Porter run, this, the um Chili Cook Off is on Saturday first too. Same yeah. But I don't know that any of those overlap. As far as time goes, because that's the same well, area I don't, that they're closing for the Cole Porter Classic for the kids part of it. Gotcha. I know the Cole Porter Classic goes um eight AM. Like, is it eight AM? As I say, I know it was in the morning. Oh, were they were they planning on running through the same area? Mm -hmm. Well, son of a gun. <laughs> but if it's that early, I don't know. Does right. Anyone know about the history days event? Talk about Cole Porter. Yeah, the Cole Porter run. Same route. Same route. They're gonna they're gonna go down, start at the Circus Building, take Miami down the canal, canal, um, all the way down West Canal. Okay, they're not gonna be on Fifth Street. No. For the okay. kids part of it that's earlier, that's the section that they're closing. But that's only from, I think, 8 to 9. So the Cole Porter's going to have a kids' room? Yeah. I vaguely remember that now. Yeah, right. that's the Rediscovery Group's doing it. Oh, the Rediscovery Downtown Peru's doing that? So what time We're is going to run it? the kids' event. What time is this one? They don't have the time on their request, from what Excuse I can me, see. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I can tell you that I've been emailed her back and forth, and she had already contacted Wade, uh -huh. and Wade said that it was no problem at all. 
Okay. And I actually called Wade and talked to him about it, and he said, oh, yeah, she called. I told her that wouldn't be a problem. Well, all so right. So she went straight to Wade before I talked to her. <laughs> so I thought maybe you'd want to gotcha. know that. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't have a time on this. Uh, I do know from what I remember. There was events from 10 o'clock to like 4. I believe so. Uh, 10 to 4 is when they had events, if, if I do remember right. And I don't know, they're all on the grass. Yeah. They're up on courthouse, on the courthouse, along the sidewalk. So, but, I mean, they're asking for Fifth Street to be closed between Court and Broadway. So I imagine they're doing something on the street there. Um, but assuming that Wade doesn't know what he's talking about, he is the one that's scheduling all these road closures. I assume there's not a time conflict. And he said the morning um, Chris was, they were planning something eight to nine or something? Okay. Yeah. I remember that vividly because that's my house and I was like, <laughs> but then I thought, I'm not going to be leaving my house 8 a.m. on a Saturday, yeah. so whatever. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> All right. Any other questions by the board? Any comment from the chief? Or chiefs? Any other public comment? Okay. I would uh, take a motion to accept uh, Debbie Bowser's rope closure request. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it passes. Next, we have uh, Chief Meeks. You have a uh, promotion approval request for Officer Sam Finnegan. Tonight's one of those nights that are, as a police chief, is a, is a great night for me. It goes to your guys or um, offer a promotion to me that says a lot because there's not a lot of those to be had. Uh, in a small department like what we have. Um, coming to you tonight, uh, Sam Finnegan has been with the department for over 13 years. Uh, he's been a quality employee the whole time through. Um, I've had the experience of working with Sam several times through the years. I've been on 22, so we've had quite a bit of time together. Um, Sam's held supervisory positions before, uh, especially in the second shift, and this, this would be where he would go uh, if you do approve this promotion. Um, so he's been a shift sergeant before there. He's also been very instrumental with the canine program in the past. He's raised a lot of funds. Uh, he also had a canine for several years with our department. Uh, he's also done a great job with our Christmas for Kids. Uh, the fire department spoke of that with their fundraiser. Uh, Sam has done several fundraisers in the past to help raise a lot of money for our community. So I know that his name is well known in that regard as well. Um, Sam has no discipline in his record whatsoever. <coughs> and I think that just through his dedication, years of service, and all the reason that he is, I'd like to recommend that to uh, within our department, um, there is within our budget already there is a position that could be filled with that spot. So that's already a budget item. Okay. And also, Sam Pickens, see is in the back seat or back row. Everybody How you doing, Sam? Good. <laughs> Man of many words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Any. Questions from the board? Any no, that's comments? very solid recommendation. Okay. Any other, any comment or from the public? Okay. All right. So a motion to accept the promotion of Officer Sam Finnegan would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations, Sam. Yeah. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. It's lieutenant now, right? Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we have Downtown Christmas Open House Committee road closure request. Do we have anybody from the downtown uh, the open house from the Chamber of Commerce? Okay. Well, I think this is pretty straightforward. I think most of us have been to this before. Um, let's see what exactly.
So letter says November 16th, downtown Peru Christmas open house will be sponsored by NIPSCO. We'll be involving a downtown merchants promoting our downtown through Christmas cheer. Shops will be providing refreshments, music specials throughout their establishments. Windows will be decorated, Christmas lights will be lit, and the community will participate in a wonderful event. Parade will start at the depot at 6 p.m., head up Broadway, and then turn left on 7th Street at the Circus Building. Santa will then head to Santa's house on his sleigh to visit the children from 6.30 to 8.30. Shops will be open for stamping starting at 6.30 until 9. The request is for help with the parade and providing an escort at the beginning and end of the parade and to have Broadway closed both sides of the street until the parade is over. This will be a moving closure. Is that uh, how we've done it in the past, uh, the moving closure? Is there, you want to add anything to this, Chief? No, uh, typically we put our ladder truck at the start of that. I know uh, the police department helps out. And, um, we actually deliver Santa in the ladder truck so he gets in the cab. Oh. <laughs> and he gets a ride, but you know our ladder truck takes up a lot of space, so we've never had any issues before that I can think of. So. Okay. And it's over pretty quickly. I mean, it really right. didn't take that long. So. Gotcha. any other comment concern board or anyone from the public I just have something on my checklist mm -hmm. and uh, it might have been taken care of at the one meeting I, uh, we had that second amendment to the access agreement for Nipscale was that ever uh, taken through the board we haven't we haven't dealt with that yet all right, well then I'm okay. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Any other comments or anything from the public? Anyone else? All right. Well then I take a, uh, a motion to accept the uh, downtown open house road closure request. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we're past that. Next we have Catherine Peck, the local food it says blanket proposition with blanket. No. Okay. That's right. <laughs> that's, I didn't think that sounded right. <laughs> gotcha. Hi, I am here. Um, my family and I are kind of new to the area, and in our old um, noticed some really cool things going on for um, hunger, but also directed mostly toward children. And I was hoping to maybe try and implement something like that into Peru. I have a couple of copies of what I'm wanting to do. Sorry, my 17-month-old got a hold of one of them and uh, colored all over it. So this is what I'm wanting to do. So it's a food pantry, essentially. And with that, it's freestanding, but it's not indoors. It would be outside. It is completely anonymous. So. Anybody can come to it and donate to it. Anybody can come to it and take away from it. It would be non-perishable food items, toiletries, um, you know, school supplies. There would be ho um, coats, hats, things like that in, in the winter. But my one hang-up is that I didn't want to put it on a personal property. Sorry, I can... No, I'm just going to see if maybe oh, I can... Okay. I didn't want to put it on a personal property just because of vandalism and also, you know, complaints of certain people coming into certain neighborhoods. So I was thinking that, I, I spoke with the mayor about this, possibly doing it at like some fire stations because they're local, I mean, well, they're accessible by walking um, and children can get to them. They're well lit, people, somebody's there all the time and there are multiple locations around town. Um, if not, we are, I mean, I'm open to other ideas but I would take care of the cost for the building of them and putting them in. I just really want an opportunity for our community to get involved without having to, you know, write a check to the United Way, write a check to the YMCA, if they're not on Salvation Army or if they're not with the helping hands. This way, somebody just coming home from the grocery store can stop in and throw something in there and people can, um, you know, maybe get involved a little bit more. I'm not sure. Well, I, I'm not. well I, th I think it's a very, you know, 
it is optimistic, but I think it's a very well, you know, well-founded thought. You know, the definitely the heart of this is in the right place. I like the, the idea. I know we spoke, and of course, the one thing everyone's going to say is, "Well, you know, people are going to take advantage of that." And you know, like we said, that's probably true. People give to it at their will, take to it at their will, and I think that. Uh, but I feel like the benefit may outweigh that. Right. <coughs> Just getting back into the community, I grew up here, and you know, I had classmates that talked to me, not having deodorant, not having, um, you know, just things to feel clean, but things like that, and they were too embarrassed to go to these said, you know, organizations to get them. A lot of times, the parents aren't involved. A lot of times, the parents aren't the ones that are, you know, helping out, or they it gets missed, or that's not top priority. So this way, I feel like kids would have access to it and mm -hmm. I don't know I do I think that's an interesting kind of angle that a, a child in poverty is relying on their parents that who may be too drugged up or something else yeah. to even care pay attention and there's something they can go to and not be embarrassed and just go and to it would be monitored want. I mean I would probably mm -hmm. go once a week to make sure that it's coming up on expiration I would remove it and uh, you know being at a place like the fire station or the police station you know, there are officers there and, you know, firemen there every day that would be able to kind of at least look out and hope in that situation people wouldn't be as likely to vandalize. How often would you be able to uh, come by food that was getting bad or something like that? Well, you know, we do live in the area and depending on how many we were going to, you know, put in for mm -hmm. um, trial, I, I'm, I work downtown, so I feel like on my lunch I would stop by, and mm -hmm. I frequent it. I want my kids to be involved in it. I think it's something else that I, I was, one of the reasons I want to do this is what it means to give back, and then they can, you know, have a part in this. So um, we would make it a, at least a weekly, you know, part of our drive, right. if not more often. I've seen them. Volunteers to help out. Absolutely, and I think that's what we were speaking about. I would like to, you know, get the word out so it's not... Initially, I'm happy to do it, but I would love for people to get involved and, um, you know, donate and maybe just check on it. I mm -hmm. obviously want it to look right. aesthetically pleasing as well, so right. we would look into, you know, how to build it. And um, I know you said you had a couple of recommendations. I talked to some people, but mm -hmm. there are definitely <laughs> ideas here. Um, so. Okay. There was somebody that posted one of these on Facebook, positive comment. And then I guess there were some pictures of some that they do books. Oh, that's where that's actually where it stemmed from. We moved from Indianapolis, and they had like the remote libraries where you would take a book and throw it in and grab a book. And obviously, that's not a very impoverished area. But here, I thought that this would be more beneficial right now. Yeah, there was um, a lot of positive comments on. I was surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Chief, did you yeah, have? Uh, and again, I think it's a it's a good idea. My concern is is vandalism. <coughs> And I'll give you an example. We have that fish um, feeder behind. It gets vandalized three to four times a week. Yeah. A week. They're, rip, they're, they're ripping it off the post. They're stealing the money out of it. They're breaking the globe. I see this as not much different. I mean, through the day, obviously, we don't have a problem. It's at night. The walkway gets used a lot at night. And again, that fish feeder is getting vandalized three to four times a week. And again, I don't see this as any different. It's going to be open. The stuff's going to get strewn everywhere. Is is my concern. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to give it a try, but there's got to be an out clause real quick if, if it's not working. So. Do you think having it in front by the doors? Doors, because people will be parking there, Traffic. and we and we never know when we're going to get. Oh, so it have to go along it's the river walk? Out in the parking lot at both stations, <coughs> out of the way, so people's coming in and parking. They're not blocking our mission, which is you know to to run emergent. So we can't yeah. have it in front of the doors. Yeah, I think that'd be something. I, I, it's a good point. We got to make sure that it's clear. Then you can't block yeah, those we, bay doors. Because of people's parking there, and we get an ambulance truck or whatever, we can't. We can't take the time to have someone moving their vehicle, so it can't be in front of our bay doors. Which downtown, that's clear across <clears> the front of the station. So it's going to have to be out in that side lot. Mm -hmm. Which again, I'm just saying we have lots of vandalism down there with the fish uh, feeder. Yeah. And I don't see this as any, any different. I'd say the one thing that would strike me is what probably is driving the vandalism with the fish feeder is the fact that there's going to be money inside the 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 fish feeder. 
So I, I think this isn't quite as much as a target because anything that anybody would want is free. You can come and take it out. But I think if there is, if we do have an issue with vandalism or people taking stuff, if it becomes like a litter problem or anything like that, you know, <clears throat> that would be something where I don't know how to say, to set that up to where if this becomes a problem, we have the right to take it out, you know. And I don't know if that, would that be an issue, Pat, if this I, is... I, I, I doubt it. I think the thing to do is to find an agreeable spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, put it there where uh, it's not going to interfere with public safety personnel at all and, and, uh, or traffic and uh, get it taken care of. For instance, if you put it uh, actually on the park, it's what I'm visualizing, and, and you put it at the west end of the parking lot at the fire station downtown. Okay, somebody can pull in there and be right next to it and not be in the street, not be in anywhere else and take care of it. And it would be out of their way and uh, so on and so forth. Now, when you get up to Washington Street, you might have a problem. Yeah, but we, we've got enough parking there. So, you know, between the VFW and, and us at the front, right. there's enough room there. We could put it out front there. And again, I'm willing to give it a try. I think mm -hmm. it's a great idea. I, but again, I see it getting vandalized, vandalism behind the station. And this is, and we went to it at uh, station one. So we lit it up, we put cameras on the building. Uh, but again, we still have some problems there. So would you want to um, give it a shot at station one? Say we'll start with one, maybe there, uh, at a place where it be, where you think that it would work. And, you know, after we could give it a, you know, a trial period, and we can talk about, you know, is this working, is it not? Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do that. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, is, do, you want, do you have any suggestion on the wording, what we should uh, approve tonight, Pat, as far as the parameters of this? Well, I think it uh, is simply to show her request to, I don't know, what do you call the box? It's like a fruit, it's a, they're calling them like um, food pantries or like Free pantries is what I've seen advertised, but I don't know if there's really. I'll just use that wording and say that uh, uh, permission is granted to, uh, as an introduction, install one at uh, station number one and, and uh, then maybe two and uh, and leave it, leave it at that. And that will be your period for a couple months and see where you are and then come back and read that. So let's say permission for uh, Catherine Peck to, um, per direction of the fire chief, install and maintain uh, a free pantry on the city property for a period of, uh, we can give it a, 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 a six month, a year trial, and then come back and say, does this work, does it want work? And what are you guys comfortable with? What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I, I mean, again, we've never done this before, so it, it'll be a work in progress. But uh, okay. and if it if it goes well, then I I agree. We could put them in in other places. But uh, I would do a for now. Why don't we do a three month uh, trial period and and then we we'll revisit it in three months. Well, that that sound. That's great. Okay. Thanks. Maybe by then we can find other locations if it seems to be working. Well, if the trains ever get moved. You can put them down there. Where, where, uh, I know, I know. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any other uh, comment? I have yep. a question. Thanks, Pat. If, if there would be a business, mine, for example, that would want to do something like this, would we have to request special permission to do that? Or is it why. something that if the young lady wanting to set it up is okay with it? I would, I would assume that if you own the property, you could put something like this up on your property. That was what I was going to suggest, finding maybe some business owners that would be willing and supportive of that to be able to put it in front of their buildings. Because we have plenty right. of parking and light area in front of the shop. So. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So I would, is there any other comment from the public or any concern? 
Uh, motion to accept permission for Catherine Peck to uh, construct and place the free food pantry per the uh, <laughs> specifications of the fire chief for a three month period. Um, I have a motion to accept that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a road closure request from Vicki Draper. Um, I believe this would probably be. I think it's going to be the same one we've already approved. Oh, it is it? Okay. It's for the bicentennial. I think it's all in the same. I don't same. know why I got it. I think it's the same one. Yep. Right. Yeah, I believe so. Well, I believe you're this right. This has the time from 10 to 3, yeah, this which sounds really time. close. And it's 5th on Court Street, yeah. Okay. All right. So with that, I believe that's all we have. Is there anything else come before the board? Anything from the public? Electric. Fish? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. We do have a late entry. We have an uh, electrical test to be approved. This is, so you got a 93% overall. 90 on part one, 97 on part two. Just, or, I'm sorry, Chris, keep on. That's um, right there. About three pages back, it's got the, the gentleman's name on it. Somewhere in there, it's Mark Molden, I believe. Mark, Mark Mullen is from. It's got his. Okay. Right. Yeah, it looked like he did pretty well on the test. Any discussion? Nope. Public comment discussion? All right. Well, what, then. What are you talking about? Uh, this is a. Uh, electrical test. Yeah, electrical test. And it's just a submittal. We have to approve the electrical test by the Board of Works. So we'll we'll install panels in Peru. Certified. Yep. You have to do. You have to be licensed in Peru to do electrical work, and your license has to be approved by the Board of Works. So, this gentleman uh, uh, got a 93% on the test, or I'm um, yeah, 93.6765. So, any other questions? Okay. Well, then, uh, motion to to accept uh, this test as presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Is there anything else? All right. Well, then, motion to adjourn will be in order. So moved. No, second. <laughs> All right. We're up. Thank you, guys.